Yes, Amos, we're finally creating a game. Hello, Yawning Angel back again, another Amos video. Yes, and in this video, we are going to be creating a small game, bringing together all the material that we've covered in the previous videos and going to actually make something out of it now. How exciting is that? Right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna build on the code that we worked on in my last video. The link to that video is up here. Remember, that one was about sprite animation and collision detection. You're also gonna need the code for that uh, from that video, and that can be obtained from my website. Go to this link here, which takes you to my downloads page, and you need to look for the program code for sprites, animate, and collide. So we've effectively got the mechanics, the raw mechanics of a game there already, but this time we're gonna add some extra things in and make it a little bit more challenging. Yes, in this game, you are gonna take control of a character who is chasing down another character on the screen that keeps appearing randomly. Every time you make contact with that character, it flips to another location. Hmm, not that interesting, but what we're gonna do is add in a timer element so you're doing it against the clock. And speaking of clocks, there'll be a clock appearing in the game which could give you some extra time to help you on your quest. It's a simple game, but based on everything we've done so far, I think this brings everything together quite nicely to show you what can be done in Amos. And it also gives you room to expand and add to that as you see fit. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Right, so in this video, we're not going to be picking up any new commands for sprites or animation or collision detection because we've already done all of that. That's been covered in the previous video and the videos leading up to it. Uh, we're gonna take a look at a couple of new commands. Timer, because Amos has a built-in timer command, we can make use of that. Also for printing things on the screen, there's a command center. So when you're trying to align text to the middle of the screen, we can use the center command to get Amos to do that automatically. Once again, very simple stuff based on everything we've done so far. But this is just adding the garnish to a program which has developed over time and will give us a bit of fun, something to play with at the end of the day and hopefully inspire people to go on and create their own types of games using this. So let's get a cup of tea and let's get on with the coding. Right then, a quick mouthful of tea. Oh, that's good. Right, so here we are in the code. Um, I've written a few comments here. So what I've done, I've taken the program from last time and I've just put some comments in because we're gonna build in the extra bits to make this uh, a game as we progress. So I've got some comments in here, like we're gonna set the timer in here. Uh, we've got some global variables to define, etc., etc. So we'll go through and do that. But basically what this program is looking like at the moment, uh, let me just check it and quickly run it. So what we've got here is, you know, it's very simple. We've got our character which we control and when it tags a, another, or the, the, the other jumping player that moves around the screen and we just keep on running around and tagging him basically. Uh, press the fire button to quit the game and get back into the code. So we're gonna build on that. Right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do, uh, then the extra bit we're going to put in here, we're gonna put in a timer, we're gonna have our global variables, and what else are we doing down here? There's some extra bits of code. Right, so in our main routine here, uh, we're gonna control the timer, um, we've got our score going on there, we've got our joystick control, that all stays the same. Uh, we check our collision detection for our sprite. There is a slight line change here into the code, but I'll talk about that in a minute. We've got a score to increase. We've got a timer to reset. Uh, we've got a handle a clock appearing on the screen as well. So we'll need to control that. Um, we also need to check for a collision detection on the clock when it appears. Uh, we've got to check for the timer running out because when the timer runs out, it is game over. Game over, man, game over. Um, so we've got to deal with that. Obviously all this code stays the same in terms of assigning our color. So anything to do with the sprite generation is, is still the same, nothing's changed there. Um, we've got our random sprite positioning there. We also have an extra piece of code for putting the clock on the screen, which is very similar to our random sprite uh, generator up above. 
Uh, we've also got a, how do we handle the game? We need to handle things gracefully and elegantly when the game ends. And what are we going to use there? Uh, heads up, we're going to use a window. Yes, we haven't covered windows for a while, but I do have a video on windows. There should be a link up above somewhere for that. Right, so let's dive in and get going. So, uh, another mouthful of tea quickly. I, I do not like cold tea. As soon as tea stops being scalding hot, I do not enjoy it. Uh, there you go, brief insight. Right, okay. So uh, we need to deal with our timer. So uh, Amos has a timer command. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna just activate it by calling timer. Uh, timer, we're gonna set it to a value of minus 300. What does that even mean? Okay, so a timer, sets up a count basically in 50ths of a second. So I've put that here in the comment. Um, and what we've done, we want basically 300, I've set it to 300 50ths of a second, which should give us about four or five seconds if you do the maths. Uh, and I've set it to a minus value because we need the counter to, the timer to count down. If you have that as a positive value, it'll count up, but we need it to count down to zero. So there we go, we've set a timer. Good old Amos, really, <laughs> really straightforward. Um, we need some global variables in here. So our global variables, uh, we're just gonna define as usual. So global, we're gonna have a score. We may have defined these already, but I'm just defining them um, here for completeness. Uh, so we've got these values. So we've got a, a variable called score, which unsurprisingly is holding a score value. We've got a variable called clock shown. Has the clock been shown yes or no? And we've got a bonus value here, which will come into effect when the clock appears. That will become clear later. Right, uh, so moving on down through the code, all of the movement stuff stays on, all the channels stay the same, nothing has changed there from the last last time we looked at this program. Our animation stays the same, that's all good. So this is the beauty of building this code up you know, in stages and not diving straight in. You, you get the fundamentals working and then you, you know, start to, to embellish it, to, to, not embellish it, to, to add to it, you know what I mean? Uh, right, so in our main routine then, we've got some timer stuff to be dealing with. So in our main do loop, which is handling, checking the joystick for input and checking for our collision detection and all the rest of it, what we need to do is handle the timer because the timer needs to count down. So in here, I'm gonna set another value called TR and this is going to equal uh, the absolute value of timer divided by 60, okay? So, Basically, you take the timer value, which is at 300, divide it by 60, and that's going to give us a value. And that should start off at about four seconds, five seconds, four seconds, around there. Uh, how do you know this, Yawning Angel? Because trial and error, I did all this before. So should, we should be on five seconds. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is locate on the screen at 0, 0. Uh, I'm just going to print, uh, quite simply, timer and give that uh, the value of uh, TR, and then we'll put a space in after it as well, just to make it look tidy. Uh, so we'll enter there, F3 to indent that code, F2 to check it, there are no errors, but if I press F1, and now you can see at the top of the screen up here, I've got a timer counting down, okay? Right, and nothing happens when it hits zero because we haven't written that code yet. Right, so that's our timer set up. Uh, so everything else in here stays the same, basically. Uh, so our score, our movement stays the same. So there is a change to this line here. And th this was highlighted to me by Franco Walker, who is uh, a valuable and avid viewer of my videos. Uh, so this change used to say, uh, this line, sorry, used to say if SC equals minus one. So this was the sprite collision detection. Don't have to do that. You can just have if SC and it does exactly the same job. So thank you, Franco, for that, that hint from last time. Uh, all good. Right. So um, so that's that bit of code. So now what I need to do, so we've, uh, we now need to increase a score. So I'm just going to do ink score, that will increase my score value. So as soon as we do the collision detection, bang, we're going to increase the score. 
uh, happy days. Then what I want to do is reset the timer because when you've made the contact with the, the character you're trying to hit, your timer needs to reset. So, because otherwise it's unfair. You've only got five seconds to, it, it's not enough. So we need to reset the timer. <laughs> so uh, all I'm going to do then is just set this to timer equals minus 300. Um, and then we're going to place, the, the sprite gets placed randomly again. And then we need to look at the clock showing. So what's going to happen, I'll tell you the mechanics of the clock. It's not, a, a clock will appear on screen randomly at random times at random positions. Uh, so not every time, you won't get it every time, but you'll get it sometimes. And when you do, it's going to give you more time to run across the screen to tag your character. You'll also get a bonus score for tagging the clock as well, which is really, really useful. So we're going to have a procedure that will handle the clock, uh, and it's quite simply called clock on screen. Um, so yeah, dead straightforward. <laughs> so uh, right, here we go then. Uh, another new piece of code. So we need to check for a sprite collision on the clock. Have you tagged the clock when it appears? But we only want to do this if the clock is actually being shown, because otherwise it's a waste of code resources if you're constantly checking for a collision, which will never happen if the clock is not on the screen. So if the clock is on the screen, we need to check has, has the player tagged it. Uh, so what we'll do then, we'll start typing. So we'll have if uh, clock shown equals one. So if we have actually got a clock on the screen, we'll set the value for clock shown when we, we set it on the screen. So we're going to check the value of clock shown. Uh, what I'm going to do though is just quickly uh, put in my end if, so I can see the code here. Right, let's go. So SCL equals uh, sprite call on sprite 11. Okay, so remember our sprite collision detection. So sprite call checks for the collision detection. Uh, only one L on there. Uh, on sprite 11, which is our clock. So then we'll come in with our, have we actually had a collision detection? So if SCL, okay, so a good habit to get into is when you do uh, an if or an end if or do or any of those, you start off a loop or any conditioning, is put the end command in as well. So all you have to worry about is what goes in the middle. It's just good coding practice. So uh, if we've actually uh, hit the clock, let's put a little comment in here. So what we want to do is, increase the bonus score and all we're going to do then is ink the value of bonus okay um, we need to now increase the timer increase the timer and what we're going to do here is now set timer equals minus 600 okay not 300, 600. Remember minus 600 because we need it to count down. Always be careful, make sure you've got that minus sign in there. Right, uh, and then what we want to do is, once it's been tagged, we need to remove the clock from the screen. So remove clock from screen. And now what we're going to do, we are actually going to use a sprite command here to turn that off. So sprite off 11. And what that will do is turn our sprite off. It will not be shown on the screen anymore until the next time. And then what we want to do is set the value of clock shown equal to zero. It's really that easy. Let's tidy that up. No errors, that's fine. So what we're doing here is if the clock is shown, we're going to check for a collision on sprite 11, which is the clock sprite. If there's a sprite, uh, sprite collision. We're going to increase our bonus, we're going to increase the value of the timer, then we're going to turn the sprite off and we're going to set clock shown equal to zero. It really is that straightforward. So with um, that done, we now need to check for the timer actually running out of time and the game ending. So Let's get some code in here. Right, so what I'm going to do then is if uh, tr equals zero. So what's tr? So tr was that value we set for our timer. Remember back up here, if I go back up here. So tr was the absolute value of our timer divided by 60. 
So that's always going to have a numeric value in it. And what we're checking down here basically is if it equals zero, does our timer get to zero? So let's just quickly uh, put in our end if and come back up here. And here we go. So what we want to do then is sprite uh, off 11. Uh, so what this is going to do is um, remove clock from screen. Tidy up. There's a reason for this. Uh, this is just purely tidying the screen up for what I want to show later. So if the clock is on the screen, I just want to get rid of it. I could put a check in here for that, but I'm just quickly chucking this in. Remember, this is quick and dirty code. Um, I just want to get that clock off of the screen. Uh, then we want to go to a procedure called game over, man, or just game over. Um, would be a lot more useful. And then we're going to do some stuff. We're going to do some housekeeping. Uh, so, oh, so score uh, equals zero. We're resetting the score. We're going to reset the bonus. Um, and we're going to reset clock shown equal to zero. And move, we're going to switch back on. And we're going to reset our timer to 300. I'll explain why I'm doing this in a minute. We're also going to position a random sprite on the screen. You're probably thinking, Yawning Angel, it's game over. Why are you doing all this stuff? I will explain it. I will explain it. I'm going to explain it now. So what's happening here, if our timer has reached zero, OK, we've got some housekeeping to do. So we're going to turn off sprite 11, which is the clock. If that appears on the screen, we're going to get rid of it. And you'll see why in a minute. We're then going to go into a procedure called game over, which will handle the game over mechanics. But then when that procedure is finished, it's going to drop back into this code and it's going to reset our values. And if you can see what it's doing here, it's getting ready to rerun the game. So game over will handle the procedure game over will hand over handle the game over code. But then there's an option to come back into the game. And that's what this little bit is here. It's just tidying everything up now. I could put this into another procedure called game reset. That could go in there to make the code even tidier. It's another way of doing it. It's entirely up to you. Whatever works for you. But for now, that's what that's going to do. OK, let's uh, right. So move through the rest of the code. Everything else is the same. So we've still got our color assignment procedure there. Thanks once again to Franco Walker. Brilliant. Uh, we've got our random sprite. Uh, code here stays the same. Now I've got to say, quick thing here, Franco did provide me with some code to sort out this random positioning and stop having to do all this fiddly stuff. The code is sound and works, but I've decided to leave this in here because this is what we've built on so far and I just want to leave it as it is. This is not a program tutorial about positioning stuff, checking coordinates in this way. We're just going to leave that code as it is. I've probably confused a loads of people now, and I do apologize, but let's just say, for sake of argument, this code is remaining unchanged. Right, new procedure, clock on screen. Da, da, da. Let's put a clock on the screen, and let me get to my notes. Right, so we're going to place a clock on the screen for extra time if you collect it or if you tag the clock. So let's go. Uh, we've got a variable here called clock face, and clock face is going to be a random number between zero and two. Okay, there's probably an easier way of doing this, but this is the way I'm doing it. Then what we're going to say here is if clock face equals uh, one, then we're going to do some stuff. Put in my end if. You're probably wondering, Yawning Angel, why do you put so much space in here and then you just keep carriage returning at the end of each line? Old habits die hard. As a developer and as a Java developer, I've always done that. I apologize. It's just what I do. Right, so if our random number generated between 0 and 2 is actually a value of 1, then we're going to do some stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is create a channel 3. And that's going to be sprite 11. And um, sprite 11, comma, so we're going to position at here first of all, uh, 50, comma, 5. So you probably need to look at the last video for what this means. But this is effectively saying sprite 11, these are x and y coordinates, and it's going to be image number 5 from our image bank. It's all handled in the last couple of videos, so I'm not going to explain that again. 
So then what we're going to do is deal with the sprite animation. And we're going to do anim uh, 3 because it's channel 3. Remember, you animate the channel, not the sprite. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then we put in some AMAL code. So uh, that's going to be uh, image 5. No, we're going to do this in brackets, first of all. So image 5, uh, was that for a tenth of a second? And then we're going to do image 6 for a tenth of a second. And we're going to put L in there to loop it, to constantly repeat it. And that is that. And then we're going to put, we're going to switch on animation for channel three. OK, so we're checking. Are we showing the clock on the screen? We then assign our channel three to sprite 11. Sprite 11 goes to those x and y coordinates and it's image number five. Uh, we're then going to do animate channel three. So image five for a tenth of a second, image six for a tenth of a second. And we're going to loop it. That's what the L is there for. Then we're going to switch on the animation for channel three. And then what we're going to do is pretty much do the same sort of code that we've got for our random sprite um, uh, character appearing on the screen. And we're just going to set our x and y coordinates for that. So rather than you watch me type all that in, I'm going to type it in and then I'll just cover it afterwards. So let me get on and do that. OK, so here we are. I've done the code and it's effectively the same code that we had for our random sprites. What we're doing um, is we're choosing a, an X ra a random X coordinate position and a random Y coordinate position. We're making sure that they sit within the boundaries of 320 and 200. Um, and then we're converting those coordinates to hardware coordinates in order to display uh, the sprite, not the sprint, the sprite on the screen. Um, and then we just put sprite 11 at those coordinates using image 5. And then we set the value of clock shown to 1. So now we have effectively shown, told the program the clock exists on the screen. So I'm going to press F2. I'm going to press F3 to uh, line up all my code. That's done. I'm going to save it with left Amiga S. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to run this program now because I'm confident it'll run. So let's see what we've got then. We've got a timer counting down and we've got our character which we can move across the screen. Please notice the timer got to zero and it just reset. That's because we haven't put the game end code, uh, the game over code in here yet. So if I tag that, you see the timer reset. So now our score starts to go up. And look, our clock has appeared on the screen. So watch what happens to timer. As I hit that, the timer goes up. Yeah, if you hit the clock, the timer goes up, gives you more time to get to your character. Uh, so let's do that again. That goes up. I don't have to hit the clock, but if I do, I get extra time. So that code is working. Right, we're nearly there. So there's our clock on the screen. That's all done. Now let's do our game over procedure. Um, which is going to be amazing. Right, let's start then. Um, I've run out of tea, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> right, so the first thing we want to do for our game over, as soon as the timer hits zero, we want to start to do some housekeeping on the screen and tidy things up a bit. So the first thing we need to do is turn off any movement. We don't want any joystick input to be working here. We just want to turn off any, any movement whatsoever. We are then going to open a window uh, with our end of game stats. So we're, if you can remember this, it's wind open and then we put a, a window number. We've got uh, our starting X and Y coordinates and then we've got our uh, size, I think in characters, and our last number on there is border. That's what the border will be. Uh, in there, we're going to set our paper color. I just know that it's paper seven. We're going to use the CLW command for clearing window. And we're going to make sure our cursor is off. Okay. And then just for a bit of fun, just for a bit of eye candy, we're going to put some sprites in there just for, you'll see in a minute. Uh, so sprite nine, which is our player character. We're going to put that at 230, uh, 180, and we're going to use image one. Uh, Sprite uh, 10, we're going to put it at 330, uh, 180, and we're going to use image 3. Okay, now, now let's get some stuff written onto that window. So we're going to use pen 4, and we're going to use the command center, and we're going to print game over. Game over, man. It's from aliens, isn't it? 
great film. I watched that again the other night. Really good. Um, center. So basically, I could use locate to get the print positions and try and work out where the center is. But Amos has already got a command called center. So why don't I just make use of that? Please note that only works for strings. As far as I can see, that only works for strings. Because now I want to put um, some scores in. So, uh, so what I want to do next is pen five and uh, I want to come down. Now remember, center only centers on the line that you're on. So I now need to move the line down. So I'm going to use locate. Now locate has usually got an X and Y coordinate. I'm not going to use the X. I'm going to leave that as a space. So I'm going to put comma, oh, comma, two to bring me down to the next line. Center, um, you tag the target, space. Then I'm going to use locate, comma, four, because I, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the locate 12, comma, three, an actual position, and I'm going to print score. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to locate four. Uh, no, I'm going to locate comma four. Come on, you're an angel. Concentrate. That's because I'm excited. We're nearly near the end. Uh, center. And I'm going to do space, uh, space times, close my quotes, put a full stop in there, some good grammar. Uh, then I'm going to do locate, comma six, center, um, and I'm going to print, you got the clock, space, space. Then I'm going to do now I need to do an actual location here. 12 comma 7, print uh, our bonus, because every time we tagged the clock, we incremented the value of bonus. And then I'm going to do locate comma, oh, comma 8. Um, and I'm going to do center, space, space, oh, no, space, times, Keep it together, Yawning Angel, we're nearly there. <laughs> uh, locate, comma, 10, and we're going to do a center, and we're going to do press, oh, press space bar uh, to play, and I'm going to do locate, comma, uh, 11, center, uh, press, Oh, no, press Q to quit. Ta da! OK. Check no. Oh, there's a syntax error. Sp yeah, there is. There is a syntax. This is why I press F2, because uh, there needs to be a comma in there. That's fine. No errors. Good. Quickly save that. Now, as you can see, what's happening here, I've opened my window. I've got some eye candy here in terms of these sprites. You'll see that in a minute. Uh, I've got the message here, I'm giving the scores to the, to the player, and I'm telling them that they can press the space bar to play this game again, or they can just press Q to quit. So now I need to put some code in to actually handle that. So I need a little do loop, do loop in here, and all I'm going to do is if in key string, so if any key pressed is Q, oh, goodness, Q, uh, if it's true, uh, then all I'm going to do here is end the program and end if there. Let's just press F3 to indent that. Um, so then if in key uh, string, remember in key string is checking for whatever key you've pressed, yeah? Uh, if that equals space, sp oh golly, I'm all over the place today. Uh, if that equals space, then what I want to do is wind close. So I want to close the window that we've just opened. And then I want to exit, and then I want to end if. End if, so let's F3 that, and let's do that. Let's tidy this code up, save that. So what's happening here? So once the message has been displayed, if I press Q, it will end the program completely. If I press space, it's going to close this window and then exit out of this procedure, OK? And that means it will go all the way back yeah, control will pass back to here. So I've come out of my game over procedure, and then it's going to reset the score, reset the bonus, reset the clock shown, switch movement back on, reset the timer, put a random sprite on the screen. Yeah, and then go back through the main loop again, and we're up and playing. 
So are we ready to see if this works? Let's find out. Pressing uh, F2, no errors, press F1, let's grab the joystick. And here we go. So my time is counting down. Tag in my character, tagged once. Oh, it's all the way over here. Am I gonna have enough time to get to it? No, I didn't. The timer hit zero. And here's our window. Our window has appeared. Game over. You tag the target two times. I need to correct the spelling on there for target. I'll do that. You've got the clock zero times. Press space bar to play or Q to quit. So if I press space bar, there we go. And we're back in the game. So we start again. There's the clock. The clock has appeared. Let's grab the clock. Got the clock. The timer's increased. Tag in. No, I don't need to get the clock this time because I've got enough time to get to it. Um, but I'm, as I'm going down there, I'm going to pick the clock up anyway. Uh, let's just grab the clock again just for a bonus. See, now with the clock appearing on the screen, it's now a little bit easier. But what I'm going to do is just tag your man here. Let's go. And do you know, I'm just going to let this run out now. I'm just going to let the timer count down because now we'll see what happens. Game over, tags the target 11 times. Target, I do need to spell that correctly. Uh, you've got the clock four times. Uh, so there you go. And of course, th what I had the code there for our two sprites, they're just animated. They're just in that window, just giving it a little bit more, more fun. I can press Q to quit. My program ends. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a very simple game in Amos. Thank you for being on the journey with me. That is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy. I hope you are happy too. <laughs> Hooray, we got there. But you're saying, your game has no sound. I know, you're not far wrong there, and that's because we haven't covered sound yet in Amos, and we're gonna cover sound in future videos, so don't worry about that. If you have a way of adding sound to the game, there are some built-in sound effects within Amos, please feel free to explore them. Once again, make use of the Amos manual. There's loads of stuff in there. Uh, but I purposely haven't covered sound because we've just been dealing with the animation. So sound is coming up in a future video, but for now, We've got a working game. So there you have it, a very, very quick and simple game. But what can you do? I know there's people who watch these videos who can maybe do some other stuff with this. So well, how about you take this and advance on it, come up with your own idea and concept, build on it. I would love to see what you can do. If you can change this and or come up with your own concept and idea, go for it do some stuff and share it with me. I would love to see what people are making out there. Uh, you can contact me on any of the socials, address coming up for those later, or you can contact me directly on my website. There's a link here to my contact page. Drop me a line, share me some stuff, show me what you've done. It could be really exciting. So yeah, come on, get out there, let's get creating. And that is it for another video. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really, really hope you've got something out of this. And we've created something here which is a bit of fun. This kind of wraps up sprites as far as I'll be covering them. May visit them again sometime in the far future, but there's other things that I wanna cover in future Amos videos. Gonna be looking at some code conversions for older programs on other systems. Hmm, that could be interesting. Anyway, um, I wanna say thank you to all of you who have given me so much support while I've been making these. There are some regular viewers uh, who watch these videos and give me a lot of feedback, a lot of comments and a lot of support. I really wanna thank you ever so much from the bottom of my heart. It really does help me and just keeps me going. Uh, I wanna give a bit of a shout out to amiganews.de. Uh, their address uh, is here. Go check them out uh, for um, all things Amiga News. They've been really supportive of my work and my channel. Thank you, folks. Um, so if you wanna find me, there's obviously my website. You can go there and download the code for this and all the various bits that you'll need to get this working. Uh, the code is there in AMOS format and .txt format if you want it. Um, so I'm on the socials, I'm on the Twitter, Mastodon. Uh, I have a Ko-fi account. If you feel that you wanna support me in some way, please feel free to make use of my Ko-fi account. The address for it is up here. So uh, I just wanna say thank you once again for watching this. I really appreciate it. Please leave any comments uh, in the comments section down below if you'd like to. And until next time, keep safe and whatever you do, keep it retro. 